Try to think of the most evil characters in cinema history. The Joker, Hans Landa from Inglourious Bastards, Siddharth Abhimanyu from Tani Orvan, or most recently, Berlin from Super Deluxe. He's just so irritatingly, so scarily evil. But even such an evil human being has a slightly positive side. For example, in Super Deluxe, there's this scene in the police station where there's a caterpillar on the floor and Berlin actually picks it up and keeps it outside to protect it from being stamped by anyone in the police station. Whereas this guy, even with animals, his first thought is not to protect the animal, not to beat or scare away or kill the animal in order to protect himself. His first thought is how to use even an animal to his own advantage. That is Mukunda Nunni, who is a mix of Saul Goodwin from Better Call Saul and Louis Bloom from Nightcrawler, one of the most fascinating evil characters that I've seen in a while, who makes up this fascinatingly perfect Malayalam film called I Like This. Mukundan Unni Associates. Directed by a first-time filmmaker who's probably been making this film in his head for many, many years, Abhinav Sundar Nayak. Mukundan Unni is a junior lawyer who has limited means and wants to be successful at any cost. And the lengths that he goes to achieve the success, that's the story and that's his character. This is all you need to know and when you watch Mukundan going about doing his business, you'll be laughing, you'll be howling, you'll be shocked, you'll be entertained and you might even feel guilty for liking him and for rooting for him. Instead of watching a movie, it's like we've entered this world, which is similar to the world we live in, but the remote control of this world is in the hands of director Abhinav Sundar Nayak, and he plays God, choosing what happens to us, choosing what emotions we should go through with every button he presses. And the first button that he has in his control is the opening credits. We've seen filmmakers and films who draw us in from the first shot, but for the first time, I'm seeing a filmmaker establish the world of his film right from the smoking kills card. No animals a harmed card and the cherry on top is this simple card about human beings and their grey shades and it's a shame that I didn't watch this in theatres because if I did it'll be the first time that I clap for a bunch of text on screen the world and its characters the first actual shot that you see of this film is literally the earth and within the next three shots the character of Mukundan is completely established you understand what he wants how he's working for it why it's not enough and what he needs to do this is a world that he shares with 7 billion other people who mostly believe that all you need to become successful is a little bit of hard work, some perseverance and a lot of other lovely useless words that don't get you anywhere, mostly. But in the same world, there are these characters who don't believe in all that. They just do what they have to do to get ahead. No guilt, no remorse, no worry about any repercussions to their own life or to the lives of others. And thankfully, Abhinav doesn't differentiate with gender, with age or any other labels that society has defined. Abhinav's world has a single label evil. Just that the degree of evil varies from person to person, but the purest avatar of evil is the character of Mukandan Unni. This is a guy who smiles when he sees someone in pain. When they're dying, he doesn't see the blood and the tears and the life that's going to be lost. He just sees the extra zeros in his bank account. In most films, filmmakers have this need to justify the protagonist's negative actions because otherwise the audience might not relate to it. So they give the protagonist a backstory with some emotional flashback or they try to compensate his negative action with some positive character trait. For example, if the main character is robbing a bank, they have to say that he's doing it for a good reason, he's doing it for a poor bunch of people who got scammed by the bank. And as an audience, sometimes we believe it if it's done well, but most times it just seems fake. Thankfully, Abhinav avoids this trap and he designs Mukundan's character as purely evil. He has no backstory, he has no redeeming qualities, absolutely nothing. In other films, when someone dies because of the main character, they show the dead person coming back as a ghost, either a real ghost or in the character's mind, and it keeps reminding the character of his or her guilt. But here, there is a person who dies because of Mukundan, but even that ghost comes back to just offer him new twisted ideas and he starts helping Mukundan out. In fact, Mukundan even makes fun of this ghost. And the overall tone of this movie is done in such a way that even though whatever you see on screen is dark, it's twisted, there's an undertone of black comedy that keeps you entertained, it keeps you laughing and then you feel bad about laughing but that's what the point of this movie is. And what elevates the world and this character is Vineet Srinivasan's casting and performance. Usually, we associate Vineet's off-screen an on-screen persona as a sweet, charming, likable, relatable person, right? Which is why this casting is perfect when Vinny Srinivasan plays this absolutely evil lawyer because to make you like such a character, to root for such a character, you cannot do it without charm, without a sense of likability. And Vinny's stoic, measured performance really hits it out of the park. 
Like example, look at this poster. He looks like the Mona Lisa and I don't know whether he's smiling or serious wants to kill someone. I have no idea what he's thinking. And the other element that perfectly captures the essence of this character in this world is the editing design and the visual language. Before directing his first film, Abhinav used to be an editor. He's edited movies like Anandam, Godha, Uriyadi and even here you can see that he's a merciless editor. There's not a single shot or a scene that's extra. You just won't be able to find any flab in the narrative because he keeps the editing razor sharp. But editing is more than just trimming and cutting. The recurrent inserts, the animations and above all, the voiceover. Usually in other films, the background narrator is this lazy plot device which is used to explain characters, any past event or just boring exposition. Here, when Mukundan narrates his own life and his state of mind, it adds a whole new dimension to the film. A simple line about how he likes the smell of a new eraser in a supermarket, it makes you relate to the this character on one side and on the other side it makes you worry about this character's mental health and wonder how f***ed up he truly is. And apparently this choice of including the character's mind voice actually came during the edit. It was not planned in the script. And another really cool aspect of the visual language is the aspect ratio itself. For those of you who don't know, aspect ratio is simply the width to height ratio of the screen when you're watching a film. For example, Mani Ratnam's Iruvar used this 4 is to 3 format and they used it as this stylistic device because it was a story that was set in the 50s and 60s and it was about cinema itself. This movie shifts between three different aspect ratios if I'm not wrong and it's not just done for time pass. When when you're watching the movie, you can feel when it's shifting and why it's shifting. I've praised many Malayalam movies in the past, I've made many videos about Malayalam movies, but this film, for all of these reasons and so many other reasons, I feel it's one of the most fearless, perfect, the ballsiest, the gutsiest Malayalam movie to come out in a long time. And just for that, I recommend everyone who's watching this to go and watch the film. You may love it, you may hate it, but whatever it is, please check out Mukunda Nuni Associates on Hotstar. Come back, let me know what you think of it in the comments, but for now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next Friday.